pay for it. Come on now. Real question is, where you at? Cheating on me? We took a whole 360, y'all. I'm not gonna lie. We broke up. Wait, wait, y'all remember Lit on Live Fridays? Come on. It really used to be Lit on Live, y'all. Lit on Live, yo. Remember that big Ooh, ass pizza? Is that. Yeah, we used to always be eating something good mm. on live. We would get crab legs, we had pizza. pizza. One time we had ramen, didn't we? They'll tell us, they'll let us know. Y'all let us know. Let I us miss know. Lit on Live. Yeah, lit on Live, we definitely gotta bring that back. Y'all, what's up, Meezy Gang? Man, where y'all been? What's up, where y'all been? Yo, bad bike, <laughs> where y'all been? Right, we know where that been. Huh, ball head Becky head out. Yeah. Real question is, where you been? Cheating on me? With ball head Becky? Look, she had the good hair, baby. Mm-hmm. Beyonce, no. baby with the good hair. Man. She should know by now, don't play with me. Don't play with that Don't boy. play with that now. Nah. I am not the one. She not one of them. I'm really not. And ball head mm. Becky, she be getting the worst of it. Yeah, she do. We don't even know where this is going, y'all, but we eating crab legs, y'all. As y'all also know that we are on our journey, so we made sure to get these crab legs bald. Just like who? Becky. <laughs> mm -hmm. We made sure to get them bald, y'all. So there ain't no seasoning, but you know, we did not that whipped up some lime, and this is just some uh, lemon with garlic in it. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't too much, you know what I'm saying? No, so this is butter. Oh, butter, butter. This is butter. Butter with garlic in it. Uh-huh, and this yeah. is lemon and lime. What's up, Easy Game? Update us, like. What y'all been doing? Y'all know our favorite place is drunken crab. I think I need a um cracker. A cracker, yeah. Mm -hmm. Or like at least a fork, because I'm not getting into it. You said I'm here and you slurping and slurping and, and working and working. Mm -hmm, no, you getting into it. I'm not getting into it. Hey, you got into it. Oh, you wanted me to get it. I'll get that. Thank you, baby. <laughs> All right. She got her fork. Y'all, so we've been busy, super busy. Let's start from July, Pride Month. First and foremost, Pride Month was probably, has to be arguably one of the busiest months of my yeah, life. Yeah, 100%. Like, it was insane. Not only was it Pride Month, but it that was, was July, right? Also, huh? That was July. Oh, that looks good. That's just my mind. Mm -hmm. We had Hold a up. great time. Mm -hmm. We went to Prime. Mm -hmm. We walked in, you know, March for the first time in Prime together. Oh my baby. Oh baby, look at you done grew up. We met a lot of y'all. Yes. Took pictures. It was really fun. Really, really cool. Yeah. Um, that was like a big booking for me too. Baby got booked, booked and busy. And you know, her baby got a up for it, just like she show up for me. Me mom, my baby, my baby, she my supporter, mm -hmm. number one. So she got booked for Spotify, Instagram. Come on, tell them baby. And then we had to go to VidCon oh, yeah. to give out our candy. As y'all know, the best candy out there, bro. When I tell y'all, let us know in the Neezies, comments. That's yeah. what it's called. Let us know in the comments if the winners get your candy again. You know, our team should be on that to make sure the winners got their candy of the challenge. That was crazy. Mm. Then as soon as we got back from VidCon, we had to go to New Orleans because we were booked for Essence Fest. Yep. So we had to fly out to New Orleans. We got a panel out there. Yep. Wait, baby, I got booked for the World Star thing. Oh. BET. She was we booked for to, BET. Remember, we, we went to World the Star. World Star, BET, Spotify. And not to mention tons of brand Instagram brand partnership. I said Instagram. Instagram. Uh huh. Not to mention we had a bunch of partnerships during Pride Month. Come on, Walmart. We got Walmart. Come on. Yeah, that it was a bunch. It was such a lit month, y'all. And I just feel like it was definitely a blessing. We were all over the place. Mm -hmm. We were exhausted. And then parties. Oh my God. Got Having a to support friends. Yep. Our PR person had us going to all the good events, networking. Mm -hmm. We were exhausted. That would have been the best time to vlog and stuff. To vlog, Damn. to do day in the lives of. Because y'all have been requesting that too. It'd be wild, y'all. Like, bruh, busy, 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 y'all, all the time. And that would have been a perfect time if we had a camera person. Cause it was just so hard being the talent and working. We're so grateful, but it was like, dang, like usually we would have captured everything, but it was like back to back to back to back. Like mm -hmm. it was crazy. Such great blessings, you know? Let us know, comment below if y'all want us to. Look at that, baby. Dang, baby, you getting all the good thumb. You getting all the good thumb. Get a bite, baby. Mm -hmm. A little bite. Mm -hmm. Sheesh. 
Thank you, baby. Yeah, let us know. Comment below if you want us to like start doing more day like life. vlog, day in the life type stuff. Uh -huh. If you guys would enjoy that and tune in, tap, tap, tap in. Mm -hmm. We love y'all. So much. But it's getting real busy. So we're trying to figure out how to balance YouTube and like the- Brand partnerships. Brand partnerships Hosting. and bookings and hostings and stuff like that. And thank God like, Y'all really come up with us. You're seeing that transition. So we want to make sure that y'all are getting the best of us. Mm -hmm. And we're also, you know, able to balance everything. Yes, but to get those up close and personal quick videos, um, like the ones that the vlogs that don't make it to YouTube and stuff like that, subscribe to our Instagram. Nat has her own subscriptions. I got my own subscriptions. I'll call y'all my close, close friends. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like we be in there. Y'all be getting everything. I don't got a name for y'all yet. I just been saying my subscriber family, but mm -hmm. we gonna come up with something cuter than that. You're gonna see like, you know, exclusive looks on there as well. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. After July. What, what are we doing? doing? Ju oh, July, oh, July. We July. were out in Miami. Mm. She got booked for Rolling Loud. Come on now. So she went and um, hosted some stuff with Spotify for Rolling Loud. Mm -hmm. And they, Spotify flew your girl out. Mm -hmm. And her girlfriend, and my baby, she had to come. That was super fire. That was an experience, yo. Who was your favorite performer? I'm not gonna lie, Don Tolliver was mm -hmm. so lit. I think he was a great performer. Who was yours? There was so many different performers. To Mulatto, how oh, do I open this? Babe? It's Lotto now. Huh? How do I open this? Let me see. Oh wow. Yeah. Oh, wasn't even nothing in there. Oh wow. You ate it, huh? You ate it. I eat it. What? <laughs> what? 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 Uh, but yeah, it was like Lotto was fire. Kanye came, he wasn't supposed to be there, but he was there. As y'all seen on my like little recap, it was just so many different people, I can't even choose, honestly. And there's another one too, so I wanna go to that one. So now we're back here, but just to update you guys, that's what we kind of been doing, is just on the go, which is like great things, you know, you guys do, I know y'all love us, don't y'all wanna see us elevate too? They're like, yeah, but bring us along, right. you know? We're gonna figure it out, y'all. We're gonna figure out how to make that balance work, you know? Mm -hmm. Because we definitely don't want y'all missing out on stuff that we're doing. YouTube is our familia. Our familia. Careful. I got you, Did girl. It hurt? Come on, now? Ooh. That belonged to me. No, babe. Come on. I haven't got any good pieces. All right, you still got some more, so dig this out too. Okay. But y'all, we're just so grateful for y'all and everything that's been coming up. So I know y'all been wondering, you know, what's going on with us in the relationship, man. We took a whole 360, y'all. I'm not gonna lie. I was worried about a relationship. I was super worried, but honestly, yeah. I think that's one good thing about us taking the break that we've taken. Like, yeah. we've had so much more time for ourselves yeah. to work on this relationship. Mm -hmm. Even just not have the stress of filming 24 seven, so because that alone can add so much like stress and like just put that pressure on our relationship. Mm -hmm. So the fact that we've been able to just enjoy it. each other's company, um, go do things, mm -hmm. you know? It's like, it feels like a new relationship, y'all. It feels like, dang, like, I'm not only getting my best friend back, but the romance is just there and just, I feel obsessed with her again, you know what I'm saying? And that's what we needed, like, to find that again. Because no, for sure. that's hard, like, when you're- that romance. Mm -hmm. When you're in a relationship for so you got long. all that butter on your chin. I almost licked it off. <laughs> when, when you're in a relationship for so long, like the things that we were experiencing, it's like, we thought it wasn't normal. We thought it was almost the end. I was starting to have to try to picture what's life gonna be like without my baby. And that was hard. Damn. You were picturing that too, girl. Don't yeah, lie now. You say it when we in a good place, it just hurt. I know. Give me a kiss, I know you. And my buttery kisses. Mm -hmm. We have been doing good for a while now. I feel like we can write a book right now about how much we've learned and about relationships just in the past like month. We broke up. Yeah, and it, was, it was tough. Living in the same house, like not talking to each other, sleeping in separate rooms, like yeah. not touching each other, not kissing each other, nothing. Like, mm -hmm. I'm was not after... gonna lie, I really thought like we're done. And like, that was after the therapy. And that was after the therapy and we were at like such a place where I honestly was just like, I felt like I, I couldn't take it anymore. She felt like she couldn't take it anymore. Then randomly we ended up having a transparent conversation because she ended up getting some good news about something. And I feel like just as 
you know, that person that's always been there for her, she just wanted to share it with me, even though we weren't talking, you know? That's what it felt like to me when you came up to me. Yeah. And I was in the kitchen, I was cooking something for me, because I wasn't even cooking for her, y'all. You know she was starving. Damn. <laughs> As y'all see, I be depending on my baby. <laughs> she walks in and she tells me the news and I was just like, of course, genuinely happy for her, even though it was weird because we haven't talked for like days. Then honestly, that just sparked so much conversation and we just end up sitting on the floor, like saying some real deep stuff. I feel like at that point, we felt like we had nothing to lose. I'm not gonna hold back. I gotta, I'm gonna tell you exactly what I know. I want what I need. I'm yeah. gonna be completely, blunt and I feel like you were with me too like mm -hmm. it wasn't I'm trying to save your feelings or avoid an argument and it's like you're either gonna listen or you're not this is what I need and like this isn't working for me you yeah. know and that was how we were both talking to each other mm -hmm. and I think we ended up that transparency gave us understanding that we didn't have before because we were always on the defense yeah. or ready to be argumentative or whatever the case may be but at this point we knew like this is it like yeah. this is if i'm gonna be argumentative right now this is really the end of this relationship you know mm -hmm. so we just listened to each other and some of the stuff we heard it hurt and it was hard to say and it was hard to hear yeah. but it got us to a point of understanding that i didn't know we could get to and like now i feel like the reason why we've been doing so good for the last month is because I have that raw understanding of what she needs and she has that raw understanding of what I need. And mm -hmm. it's nothing personal. It's just what we know we need out of life and out of a partner. And we're either going to compromise and stuff or we're not and we're gonna lose each other. Wow. You articulated that really good. Really? Yeah. And I think a lot of people can relate to it and I think a lot of people can understand it. And even if they're going through it, it's just like, ooh, come on, baby. Mm -hmm. Even if they're going through it, they can be like, well, maybe this is what I need to do. Be honest with my partner, you know? Just be honest because yeah. at, at the end of the day too, I think getting out, what would you say one of the best things for this relationship has been, or for like what step did you take that helped you to look at this relationship completely different? And what do you think is like contributing the most towards our recent success in the relationship? You know, coming into this relationship, our relationship was different. So you see me as a best friend in that transition of us being to, to lovers. It was like, I wasn't turning that comfortability off kind of, you know, and I got way too comfortable mm -hmm. from my perspective. And then even as I seen you, you know, it was like we were getting so comfortable. And sometimes I felt like we didn't have a balance. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that friendship and then the relationship would clash. It was like, it was such a great thing to actually be in love with your best friend. But it also was like, kind of like our downfall. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It, like It hurt us. Yeah, yeah, it hurt us a lot because it was like, well, damn, like, I used to do this shit with his best friends, but now we're in a relationship. Some things I can't do, I can't get away with. Not like I'm trying to be like sneaky, but like more so like, talking to her in certain ways and when to turn off that bitch and like you know that using that word and stuff like that mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying and really understanding you in a way to where it was like damn like that's when i when i realized we were too comfortable and we both had that conversation it was like i have to get uncomfortable yeah and i have to and not in a way to where it's like oh i want to walk on eggshells but uncomfortable in a way where that romance you know yeah. like even just like the little things that spicy that sexy sexy spontaneous love you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying it's like we do certain things different, even to that extent. So where it's like, yo, like that romantic side is coming back. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, it's huge. It's like a huge difference. So I feel like to answer your question, it's just like I had to step out of my comfort zone and get uncomfortable and not relearn you, but revisit the things that made you fall in love with me. Revisit the things that, even thinking about the- person. Yeah, thinking about the things that um, Shan was you know, saying in the therapy, I felt like even though we broke up after it, we now still use like a lot of the things that she gave us, you know, the tools and stuff that she gave us to, to do in our relationship. Mm -hmm. Speaking of, if y'all didn't see that therapy session, go check it out. Cause it was not only helpful for us, a lot of our viewers were like, wow. They were yes. able to apply stuff that we talked about to their relationships, mm -hmm. to their friendships, you know, family. I got a big piece, boy. Uh-uh, uh -uh. don't. That was one thing that really helped the success of our newfound relationship. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
I agree. You know, I feel like it's the process of like falling in love again. I just feel like, I, I've been thinking about this so much lately that, wow, I've learned so much that I want to be able to share. And obviously I can't share it all in a mukbang. And I would say the number one thing was for sure getting uncomfortable. Yeah. You know, comfortability is like the death of things. I think another thing that I realized, and this has like made a huge difference, is every day I wake up and I make the decision to do good in this relationship. Come on, baby, come on, let me know. I, every day, I literally roll over, and I might feel overly comfortable and just be like, I'm just gonna roll back over and go back to sleep, or I'm gonna just get on my phone, or whatever the case may be, and I'll be like, no, because that's how it starts. It yep. starts with those little decisions where you're just too, you're just comfortable, mm -hmm. and you don't treat that person like someone you're in love with, and then you fall out of love again. I'll kiss her or start rubbing her back because she loves for her back to be scratched, you know, and just be like sweet in the morning, like good morning, babe, and making those conscious decisions throughout the day. It's not just when you wake up; it's gonna be throughout the day. How? What's my tone with you? Like, how am I talking to you? Do yeah. I sound frustrated? And you would think like it's tone policing. That's how you do it, though. But it honestly isn't. Yeah. It's about being overly considerate of your partner yeah. and how they want to be talked to, how they want to be treated. This it's like, and we've been super receptive too. If I tell her, babe, I don't like the way that you've been talking to me for this past, like, you know, hour. Like, I feel like you've been blah, 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 blah. She'll be receptive to me. Mm -hmm. And then that makes me want to be receptive to her the next time she says, and she'll say it in, in a way where I can understand her and I'm not on defense and she'll just be like, babe, you know, I don't like the way you're doing this or whatever the case may be. And she knows the, the way that she talks to me, I'll be able to listen, you know? Yeah. I don't know, we've learned a lot. Like I said, I feel like I could write a whole book about how much we've learned just in this last month. And I'm really excited about this journey. I'm excited about how well we're doing together. Bro, we're doing so good. It's even just the way like we've been dealing with stuff. I know we can go yeah, on and on about it. I'm just so in love the way that we deal with stuff and how receptive we are. You know, and just telling each other versus like the beginning, or not even the beginning, when it was that turmoil stage where it's like, we said that it's like, well, I'm not being like that. If you didn't do this, then I, that, I wouldn't have said it like that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm where it's like, oh, okay, my, my partner is expressing something. Whether I intended to hurt her feelings or not, it hurt her feelings. So let me acknowledge that and not always have an excuse or a reason why. Sometimes an uh, explanation is good just so they know like, oh no, like honestly, I wasn't even thinking like that, but in that type of way. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Not like I, I wasn't, why are you being sensitive? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? In that type of way. That's toxic. That's gonna only like make her, her emotions heightened. That's gonna provoke her, you feel me? So mm -hmm. I think the way that we do stuff is I'm just so infatuated and in love with this relationship. And I, I literally can see all the people that didn't say we were gonna work out just mad, <laughs> you know, or annoyed or like, well, they're still gonna, you know, they did break up, I told you. Or pretending they were rooting for us. <laughs> yeah, like they, they couldn't see us. They, you know, swore that this was fake. They swore that you weren't like into women. And now look, it's not even for them, but it's just funny because mm -hmm. we're here and we're so in love and it's years later. You know, we're going on the third year soon. That's crazy. And I'm happy, y'all. I'm feeling really satisfied. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and just, wow. I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. So. And it ain't that like, like last thing I'm going to say. It ain't that, oh, we fixing the relationship type happy, so it's just that, because we've been there. It's just that fake, like, all right, we're doing anything we can, just to, just try to be together. We're like faking happy, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Not faking happy, but yeah, that's my baby. But like, we usually it's like feels forced. It's like, I'm going, I, I feel like I'm making ultimate sacrifices usually yeah. to get along. I feel like I'll be biting my tongue. I feel like, like babe, ooh, feels, I want to say something so bad, but it's not like that. It's like, it feels okay. like I want to, like I said, wake up every morning and see how I can do good in this relationship. Come on, baby. You know, and that's why you my, that's why you my twin soul, my soul, mm. man. I love you. I love you. The way that your eyes are glowing. Those are, those are the eyes that, you know, used to look at me when we were just best friends and you was infatuated and loved me, but you didn't know what it was. Mm -hmm. You well, know what's crazy? Yeah. One of the 
most rewarding things on our day-to-day -day journey are those moments that happen where I know for sure there would have been arguments before and we breeze through them Ooh. and we handle it well. I'm still like, you know, astonished and I'm like, we did so good. Even even us giving us each other credit. Like credit isn't necessary, but it's like, yo, babe. It is, it is though. That's another thing. Like I said, there's a long list yeah. of things that we are realizing works for us. It helps. It's like, yo, babe, like, Thank you so much for like, I noticed the other day that you did this, blah, 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 and I really- Like, tell them an example. Yeah. It's been a lot of times. I'm nah, telling you, I'll just tell. yeah, just tell it, babe, because we've been like on a roll with like, just- She was Ooh. very considerate. Ooh, dang, you got some good paycheck. Come on, nah. She was very considerate of me the other day. Oh, okay, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. It, it wasn't a super extreme thing, but that's how it starts, and that's how you gotta know. You gotta know it's the little things, and they add up. But I just made us breakfast, and she took a minute too. I think that one thing about me is I feel like our sacred moments together are us eating, you know, and especially because. I cook for us a lot of times, or even if I don't cook for us, it's just us bonding over food and we're nourishing our body. So we try not to really be on our phones like that while we're eating, eating together. We try to talk, catch up, whatever the case may be, talk about the day. So I made us breakfast and, and we live together. I know. And I think she comes to breakfast and she was on her phone, like on FaceTime the whole time. And I'm just sitting there and I'm eating and I can know she could tell that there was something wrong with me. Basically I was done with breakfast. She was done bre breakfast. She was still on the phone at the table and I just got up and like washed my bowl. And she said, are you okay? And I like went upstairs. And I was like, I'm not gonna make a big deal out of it cause I was still trying to do my part and do my work, which is not reacting or overreacting the way I usually would, but I, I didn't like it. And I was like, you know, I'll talk to her about it when I've cooled down and I'm not as upset and just let her know I don't think we should create those habits, you know? But she came up to me and came up to my office and she gave me a big hug and kiss and she, she, she saw the issue herself and was like, babe, you know, sorry for being on my phone and I'm not gonna do that again while we're eating. I didn't even have to say anything. I came in, I hugged her from behind. You were on your knees. I was like, yeah, on the floor, yeah. You were on the floor, she was on her knees, so I got down on my knees too. I said, baby, I just wanna let you know I'm sorry for not, you know, being for being on my phone, you know, during breakfast. Like you literally cook breakfast and you cook for me and I appreciate you cooking for me all the time. So I really am sorry, I won't do that next time because I know that bothers you, you know? And just something as simple as that, I could tell the light in her eyes just made her feel so good. And then we hugged you for know? a long time. Yeah, and I rubbed her and I just kissed her on her and it was just like, dang, like, even for me to do that just felt like, ooh. Look at this. Look at me growing. Yeah. You know? She know I love her, she know I like cooking, but even though you know that, it's just like you want reassurance and in those moments they matter, even though they're small, you know? Yeah, they so, matter so much. Here's where the affirmations come in because of course I, I was very receptive and it was sweet and stuff like that. And then we went on about our day and the day went well. And then I thought about it, I was brushing my teeth and it crossed my mind at night how she did that. And I was just like, usually a, my, a thought will come in, I'd be like, oh, that was sweet. And then I'll go and get in bed. I forget about her or whatever. So I went in and I just like, you know, kissed her and I whispered to her and I was like, thank you so much for doing what you did earlier, like this morning, like that meant a lot to me that you, you know, can't went out of your way to come in and make sure I was good and stuff and I appreciate it. And how did that make you feel? It was just crazy. It felt like a full circle kind of. Like we both were just all day, like kind of just making sure we were keeping each other in mind. Mm -hmm. You had a moment, I felt that moment and I felt bad because- Are you eating my crab? It's right there. No, baby, I had more than this. <laughs> Why did you do that? I thought you were breaking it for me. Oh, I thought you realized and I was like, okay, she can have one. I, I thought you were being sweet and breaking it up for me. <laughs> it wasn't one of those moments, baby. <laughs> I thought it was. You <laughs> even ask me. <laughs> I do, but give me my shit back. <laughs> give me my crap. How <laughs> over here to feel like, dang, I'm still hungry. I have to go to swap and wait for her to start putting the crab meat back over here. And I look over and she already started eating it. <laughs> the nerve. Can you crack this for me? You owe me. You already ate some of my crab. There's nothing in this one. 
You serious? I was saying that to say, Dang. let's wrap it up, y'all. It's a long <laughs> video. I was saying that to say everything was full circle that whole day. I noticed you felt some sort of way. I came to cater to your emotions, cater to your feelings. You appreciate that I catered to it. So then now you're appreciating me for appreciating you. So it was just like a ah moment. And nothing felt forced. None of either one of us asked for it. It's just, all right, like, let's cater to each other. And that's what we've been doing in this relationship. So I'm very proud of us and I love us and you know, easy gang, thank you so much for supporting us and you know And coming through this rough journey with us. Yeah, so if you got any relationship advice or questions, comment down below or anything that you even could relate to, comment down below so you know. We know that you stuck this long in the video and you as a writer, okay? Yes. We, we love, love you. you. Easy gang, we out.